Welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast with author Sarah F. Hathaway and co-host Chen Gibson. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway and Chen Gibson. Hello, and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. This is episode number 311, season 10, episode 2. Hey, Chen, what's up? Hey, Chen's up. Man, good to good to see ya. Summertime, huh? Oh, it's hot. It's hot, 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 <laughs> hot, hot. hot. Uh. I went to. I I tried to buy something off of Craigslist this week, and the guy's like, "Uh, I can't. I'm not allowed to go out because I'm kind of old, and my wife won't let me because I've had a seat stroke before. So we'll have to wait till it cools off." <laughs> I'm like, okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Um, I was doing pretty good with it because I don't mind the heat. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, we cranked up. Today. Well, you know why? Because heat rises. Exactly. So I'm so low <laughs> that I never even, like, feel it very much. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Couldn't there, let Jen. it go. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, story of my life. Story of my life. <laughs> so I got to tell you. Um. The idea for putting the audio drama up on the membership area, or not the audio drama, yeah. the audio for the story up in the membership area yep. worked fantastic. There's a brand yeah. new media player there. So guys that are uh, and gals that are members and you want to um, hear the story and you're not hearing it live when you come visit us in Twitch... Head on over to uh, the website, the membership area. It, it worked out really slick. So um, summer so road trips, right? Right. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it is perfect. I think that I might even um, put up some more audiobooks there, but we'll see. We'll pays, see. Pays so, to be a member. It does pay to be a member. So I might kind of randomly rotate them in and out, so it pays Yish. to go over there and keep checking up on it. Good stuff. I think that's what I might do with it. Uh, but let's see. So last week we kind of got reintroduced back to Erica. Uh, she went out on the hunting trip that, you know, Bennett wasn't too thrilled about. Kind of the story of their relationship. Round and round we go. Yeah. And uh, this week we jumped back over to Swenson's story. And he's a gem, just like always. Chapter 2. Sir. We have secured the Texas coastline along the Mississippi Sea, Bishop reported, standing stiffly in front of T.J. Swenson. Bishop reached up, rubbing his boonie hat on his head as he spoke. T.J. sat with a mighty command presence behind the Supreme General's desk. His bald head shone in the lantern light, and his muscles bulged under his black shirt. You have bags under your eyes. Is the exhaustion taking its toll on you? Swenson asked, analyzing his fighter. No, sir, I'm fine, Bishop answered. Good, he commented, pausing for a moment. Now we take the rest. Swenson rose from his desk to pace the space behind it. Bishop looked to Swenson's most trusted fighter, David Diaz, hoping the man would interject. Diaz knew the state of the fighters out there. He trained Swenson's black shirts commanding the efforts of the federal forces. When the man remained silent, Bishop argued, Sir, the soldiers need a rest and more food to continue on. I thought we were going to take a break once we took the coastline. Swenson chuckled at the fighters adorning his office, and they smiled back as if Bishop had told a joke. But we've come so far. It would be a shame to stop now, Swenson countered. His decision was made, and he was ready to address other issues. He approached around the side of the desk. His eyes came to rest on the woman that entered with Bishop. Inhaling her scent, he stood close in front of her. Bishop tried to refocus him, declaring, Sir, we have to rebuild the oil refineries if they are going to be of any use. The planes can't fly in this cold anyway, right? Swenson asked still watching the woman. Yes, sir, but we could have more vehicles for troop movement, Bishop countered. 
They have legs, don't they? Swenson asked. Yes, sir, but Bishop went to state another argument. Stop, Bishop, Swenson snapped, turning to look at him. I've heard your belly aching. Now make it happen. Shouldn't we discuss this with the Supreme General? Bishop asked, glaring into Swenson's eyes. The Supreme General is sick. If the public knew it, we would all be screwed. He said I was to be his mouthpiece. You were there. Are you going to question his order? Swenson barked back. No, sir, Bishop responded. Good. Then let's get this done. Once we have the South secured, it's on to the West, Swenson said diabolically, turning back to return to his chair behind the desk. What about the relief efforts in the North, sir? Bishop wondered. We don't have the resources to save them. The glaciers are advancing further south every day. Tell anyone left alive to come south to the central region. Process the new refugees. Put Yuri in charge of it. He'll know how to weed out the good ones and where to send the laborers, Swenson commented nonchalantly. Bishop's heart broke when he heard Swenson's response. All those people would be left to die or enter the slave system that Swenson had made worse since his time as the Supreme General's mouthpiece. They weren't even considered people anymore, just objects to be moved about his game board where they were needed. Who's the girly? Swenson finally asked, watching Bishop standing before him in silence while his mind spun. Bishop's eyes blinked, and he responded quickly. Her name is Mary Jo Kerr. But we all call her Joe, Bishop explained, summoning her forward. A corner of Swenson's mouth produced a smile. Joker. Cute. Where did you come from? She's an Aussie, Bishop began to explain. Is she a mute? Swenson asked. Bishop's face contorted into a look of confusion. No, sir. Let the woman answer for herself, Swenson insisted. Joe stepped forward, standing at attention. Good day, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, she responded sharply. What's your story? Swenson asked. I was in the Royal Australian Navy. The Great Quake hit while I was on holiday in Dallas visiting an old mate of mine, sir, Joe explained. When Bishop found me, I was working in a warehouse on guard duty. Her talents were wasted there, TJ. She has a strong command presence and the ability to read people and form efficient teams, Bishop explained. Swenson analyzed her carefully, calculating the capabilities of the woman standing by Bishop's side. She was as tall as Bishop, and her build was impressive. What the hell are you doing bringing her in here for our meeting? Swenson asked, slowly redirecting his eyes to Bishop. She's my right hand, TJ. She's privy to the information I am. Bishop insisted, glaring back at Swenson. And who decided that? Swenson barked, slamming his hands on the desk. He stood up quickly. Joe instinctually took a step back. Swenson took note, narrowing his eyes. Bishop reached over casually and stopped her movement, knowing the small things that could set Swenson off. I did, Bishop replied confidently. I lead the secret police. I appoint my own fighters. Swenson glared hard at Bishop, his eyes growing dark with anger. He smirked slightly and calmly sat back down. She's a fighter? He asked Bishop coolly. She's a leader, Bishop told him. Swenson's eyes stayed locked on Bishop as he commented. Anne, the smaller statured woman stepped forward from the group of black-shirted fighters lining the office. Sir, yes, sir, she responded sharply. Shirt off, Swenson told her. Her dark brown ponytail flopped onto the black tank top she wore as she removed her black uniform top. TJ, don't do this, Bishop requested. But you said she was a fighter, Swenson retorted maliciously. Give me a crack at her, sir, Joe said, stepping up next to Bishop. Swenson sat back in his chair to watch as Bishop stepped off to the side. Anne circled the larger woman, staying outside of her range, but Joe was patient. Looking to impress Swenson, 
and grew tired of waiting and closed the gap with two well-aimed roundhouse kicks. As Joe went to capture one of her legs, Anne lifted her foot and threw a third roundhouse that connected with Joe's head. The kick split her lip, and Joe spit blood on the floor, glaring back at Anne. Come on, then, Anne taunted her. Upset by the blow to her head, Joe came in ready to strike, but it was a ruse. As Anne blocked her hand, Joe caught it and used Anne's momentum against her, locking her arm painfully. Anne circled her body around to stop the pain and countered Joe's lock with one of her own. As Joe twisted her frame around, her size gave her the advantage, and Joe's elbow connected with Anne's face. As Anne's head snapped to the side, she kicked out Joe's feet. Joe fell hard to the ground, her head bouncing off the floor. Stunned for a moment, Joe reacted suddenly as Anne came in for the mount. Joe reached back as she evaded, grabbing a baton from Bishop's belt as she stood back up. Anne smiled at Joe. In need of a weapon, she said, taunting the taller woman. Joe came in expertly wielding the stick like a sword, but Anne was quite skilled with the weapon herself, and she evaded the attacks. Snatching Joe's hand from the air, Anne used all her strength to control it. The women stared at one another as they struggled for dominance. Joe suddenly pushed forward and Anne's arm bent back, making her lose her grip on the weapon. Joe turned rapidly and smashed the stick over her head. Her head bleeding, Anne went to kick Joe's knee out in a move of desperation, but Bishop stepped forward. TJ, stop this now, he insisted. We're short-staffed enough. Swenson's dark eyes looked coldly at Bishop. Anne, he commanded, that's enough. Yes, sir, she responded, disgruntled. However, the woman immediately stopped her attack, put her long sleeve shirt back on, and stepped back into line. Not bad, Bishop, Swenson told him, standing from his chair. Hopefully she can help you get this situation down south squared away. Swenson walked over and clasped him on the shoulder. Thank you, TJ, Bishop responded. We'll find a way. I know you will. You let me know what you need, okay? Swenson told him. You know I will, TJ, Bishop responded. Strolling over to Joe, TJ told her, When you're ready to do some real training, you're more than welcome to join my fighters out back. To, uh, I mean, thanks, sir, she responded, wiping the blood from her mouth. Swenson watched them leave the office. His relationship with Bishop had always been one of mutual respect, but not much more. Adams, he called one of his men forward. He was a stout man with short, sandy brown hair. Yes, sir, Adams responded. Get a scouting team together and have them follow Bishop. Make certain that woman is on the up and up, Swenson requested. Such a gem. Such a gem. Such a, I mean, such a pillar of leadership. Like, the examples that he, like... Right? He's, he's just like, just take notes. They have legs, don't the they? <laughs> 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 Do you just love that line or what? This, this poor guy comes in from the field. He's like, can't I just take a breath? He's like, no, suck it up. No, suck it up. Oh, we don't have, <laughs> we don't have gas for the vehicles. Well, they have legs, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, he's problem solving. <laughs> And for long-term listeners to the show, well, you don't even have to be listeners to the show. Um, this uh, Ellen Joker is a nod, or no, uh, Mary yeah, Joker Mary, yeah. is obviously a nod to Mrs. Ellen Joker. So love you. Love you, girl. And uh, she definitely got her own character in the book. And for her character, I actually wrote the book, and then I sent her the lines that her character says. And she did them up Australian for me and sent them back no, to me. Local knowledge, huh? Yes, yeah. So there, it was kind of hard to read <laughs> during when I was reading for the audio book. So sometimes I have an accent, <laughs> sometimes I don't, because I was like, ah, <laughs> I can't just say this like an Aussie. I can't do it justice. <laughs> so, That's yeah, funny. that was a fun part, um, putting that together with her and um definitely have some characters in here in my books that are obviously friends of my real life and things like that so yep 
Even Chin, you even got your role oh. in there. Yep. Who? Oh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's, he's he's not introduced yet. He gets introduced yeah, yeah. in this book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you made it in for the last one. <laughs> I get to shoot TJ, right? Uh, no, but good try. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil it. Oh, oh yeah, nah. I know you're just gonna fake it. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. 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 You're, oh, no. for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. All of my beta readers made it into the books. Um, See that? Mm-hmm. So I used to have like members could get into the books, but I'm working on. I'm actually working on Virgis's story right now. Mm. Yep. So Virgis will have his own book before before too long. Um, cool. He's a guy, you know, he's pivotal part of the story. He's always in the story, but you never really know what he's doing in the background. Those are, those are fun, especially after you read the series. It's always fun to learn the inside scoop on these guys yeah. and gals. That's what I thought, too. And yep. then, you know, my my hardcore survival military guys that are out there don't want to read about Erica Moore. Well, they'll have their <laughs> their military man they can read about, so... Even though he's a TJ general. is a good it's it's almost like a crime drama. Yeah. Swenson? Yeah. yeah. hmm And the MMA fighting. Read. Yeah, yeah. That's things. a fun read. Yeah. I have a really good I just got a really good review on that book, actually. Oh, that's okay. one thing. Everybody that's listening, you guys, if you go over and give me reviews, I would love you forever. That really helps me out. Um <laughs> I mean always. Forever. Yeah, for forever. It's good stuff. So, um, really appreciate reviews. Um, I think like Hope on the Horizon doesn't have any reviews right now. Uh oh. Maybe Hope on the Horizon and then Better End. So, it'd be really great if you guys go over there, uh, give me some reviews. That'd be awesome. But today, you know, coming off of TJ's story, we, we always have kind of challenged because um, TJ's kind of like, what not to do? <laughs> <laughs> So we could do the opposite, like instead of learning from what's going on, you could learn like what not to do off TJ's stories. Um, but, but we thought he was doing a good job of, uh, well, Bishop was yeah. doing a good job of kind of identifying uh, skills and talents within his crew and then appointing them to the right position, such as Joe Kerr's character. Good leadership. Mm-hmm. Good leadership um, from Bishop. Yeah, he's, you know. He's in there. He's he's a he's uh the good guy on the wrong side. <clears throat> that happens sometimes. It does. It does. You know, um oh man, I was just watching something the other day and it was like sometimes uh good men make mistakes for good reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess you could say good people make mistakes for with the best intentions, right? So, I mean, I that's my belief is Personally, I don't like to believe that people are like inherently bad or evil. I just think that everybody is trying to push their own agenda and they're doing it for the right purpose. But it, you might not um, realize the negative effects of that until, you know, you've pushed that agenda through. So that's, uh, that's kind of my way of giving everybody the benefit of the doubt and. You're all quiet. You're like, yeah, no. <laughs> You're not. Yeah. I know. It's okay. I know. know. Um, you can be all rose-colored glasses if you have to. I know. Um, who was it? Um, I always want to say Nickleton, but it's not because that's um, Ben down south. Um, come on, help me out. Houston, Ben, shooting. Ben, yeah. Oh, stop. Yeah, why no. did you? I know. Ben Branham. Branham. Yeah, because yeah. I had him play Nicholson's role, and now all I can think of is Nicholson. So, but uh, Ben Brenham, he shot me down too. He's like Sarah, like <laughs> one in three people are just bad people, you know. And I, I'm like, oh come on, you know. Oh please, can't, yeah. we, can't we just be happy? One in three is a big number too. It is a big number. It might have been one in ten. Let's say it was one in ten. I'd rather go with that point of view. Because yeah, one in three is like. It's You're like, in a room, yeah. so you, you just figure everybody else is bad. <laughs> My family of four, one of yeah. us is. <laughs> one and a half. Yeah, maybe it's one in ten or one in five. I don't know. Go back and listen to the episode, everybody. It's always good to listen to uh, Ben anyway. You pick up so yeah. much shooting tips and stuff every time. Oh, he's, folks. He's, yeah. Awesome class. Yeah. 
It's a great class. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're in Texas and you want to do some shooting. Modern that, self-defense. Yeah. That's the guy to go to. Yep. All right. So we wanted to do a show today. Oh, I'm sticking with my theme of, you know, everybody has a place. Everybody um, can be useful and has a place in our world. Because if you think about it, we're actually just all surviving anyway, even though we do it really cushily as Americans um, mm. here in America. But, um, you know, we're all basically just surviving. Um, we do a certain skill that we get a bartering item for, which is money, and we can trade that money for other things that we need. Mm -hmm. So if you break it down to the, the, you know, basics level where you have a smaller tribe, so to speak, and everybody's got their role to play, but it's the same basic thing. Uh, so one of my things <laughs> back in the past was I was like, well, computer skills aren't going to really be that, you know, <laughs> worth that much. Like if you're could just, yeah, computer techie or whatever. Um, you're a little before your time right now. so <laughs> Right. But Ken Jensen was the one who was like, dude, there's so many things that you could do, like uh -huh. defensively and things like that, where you don't need... Um, like internet, so to speak, but you're working with like the mechanics, the hardware of electronic systems and things like that. So always, you know, got to keep an open mind. can always be proved wrong. And mm -hmm. so it's my belief that everybody has a useful role. And a lot of times like uh, techie people are problem solvers. Yes. They're, um, they're really good about like kind of digging into something and figuring what's wrong and how to make it work. Right. Or how something works. To Analyzing make it out the problem to find reproduce a it or make it yep. better. Or, yeah. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah, it's the analytical brain mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the things I really wanted to preface um, this show with too was learning people's personality styles. Um, there's different personality tests and things like that, and like color association and whichever one you want to choose, that's fine. But it's good to start thinking about people's personalities and how they think, what's going to motivate them, what's going to hinder them, how you're going to um, interact with them as a management perspective. But also, mm -hmm. you know, that, that tells you a lot of, uh, I mean, I'm like an orange personality, pretty outgoing, things like that. You can't, you can't have me, you know, sitting doing stitches all day or something like that. I'm going to go nuts, you know. <laughs> I need to be able to interact and um, work my body and things like that. So yeah, it can help. It can help a leader ward off issues. Right. Right. From communication styles and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but some people, they don't want to be doing that stuff. They want to be sitting there just like taking care of this. I'm going to, you know, make this outfit for this person and fix this and do this. Or I'm going to tinker on this pan. I'm going to do this thing. And that's what they do. Um, so yep. it's good to learn that uh, kind of avenue and that'll help you in life anyway. You know, I was thinking as we were, as we were talking about this today, this is almost a two way street because the leader to be a good leader has to like absorb all the cues and stuff around him. Mm -hmm. But the people in the group also have to be honest, right? Honest about themselves and, you know, what your skills are and not what you want your skills to be, oh, right. you know what I mean? And and when you're, you know, when you're kind of asked by the leader, you should be honest, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not I, a I fake it till you make the... it type situation. It's, uh, um, this yeah. is what I got I mean, in my toolbox right to, now. Yeah, you might have to step up and just kind of do something, even yeah. if you're not great at it. But if, if we're trying to do stuff, get the, the group synchronized, and there's a person stepping up in a leadership role to kind of move the parts around to get the gears in place. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if he's getting good information, he can make better, excuse me, if they are, because it could be a she, right. <laughs> if they are getting better information, they can put the gears into the proper position. So right. the whole machinery runs better. Yeah, that's true. That's a thought that I had. Yeah, I mean, it's, no, it's, it's a two-way street. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just a good leader, but it's also a good, you know. A good team. team. Yeah. yeah, the team makes the leader, and the leader makes the team. I mean, yes. it's, it's... absolutely. It, yeah, yeah, it's co... I was thinking about that today as I was mulling it over for the show. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point, too. Because everybody likes to 
point their finger at the leader and be like, oh, well, they did this, they did that. Mm-hmm. Well, how good was the information that was coming into them that they had yep. to respond to? You know, how was it truthful or was right. it, you know, like, yeah, I'd love to be like a welder, but it might not be my strong <laughs> right? point right yeah. now. You know? like, I want to do that, so, but I have no idea yeah. how to do it. I, I've watched. Uh, but I might have thing. another strong point that I might not think is a big deal. Yeah. But it could be useful. And you, you can know? always cross train in your free time. Yeah. Because that's yep. always yep. good. You know? Yep. So, so don't like say you're a medic when you're not because you read some books and <laughs> but you, you think could that's also cool. help or run or right. do, you know, or be you a can, you know, or, be yeah. taking care of a skill that you're good at. And yep. then in your free time, you can be training with the medic on how to yep. do that better. So all those bed pants need to be changed, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Nast. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, oh, that must have been oh, uh, yeah. horrific uh, back then. Uh. So as far as food goes, um, I would just kind of broke it down into different categories of survival. And then we just have a like little chit chat about each area. So mm-hmm. food, obviously you're thinking like, oh, well, somebody has to grow food. Uh, yeah. Yes. Somebody does have to grow food. But there's also like foraging, you know, people that are skilled with that. Um, I, I, I don't want to lean as heavily into like scavenging because, um, you know, it was an interview that I did way back when with... Um, the survival mom, Lisa mm-hmm. Bedford. Yep. Right? And right. she was like, scavenging is stealing. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter like what way you look at it. And like, imagine if you were on vacation or something and then came home and your house was already scavenged. Yeah. You know? So it really, it, that really, you know, became, I guess it has to determine how far down the road you are yep. into the survival situation on how appropriate that action would be. Um, but food's going to come from all different areas, but they're not only like growing the food, but you're going to need people that cook it. Yep. Right. Process it, cook it, right. store it. Yeah. There's yep. a lot of people that have no idea how to cook in this world, which blows me away. Um, <laughs> no, right. Yeah. I don't know oh how, how you can survive without knowing how to cook, but there are some people that don't and they don't want to. And that's fine. There's plenty of other positions. Well, like not you know, wanting to is different than knowing how to. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. True. I mean, but you um and even uh so for example, in Falling Skies, that show way back when. Yeah. Pope yeah, that was, was like, Oh man, who's cooking your food? This sucks, you know. <laughs> and uh, a big part of morale. Uh, you know, yes. of the group is like, oh, we're all we're eating rice and tuna every single night forever. I mean, you're just going to like go crazy sauce. Um, if, you know, I couldn't do it. I've done it before because I had to cut weight mm-hmm. from martial arts, you know, but um, it, that's not going to work on a long term basis. So people that are skilled at cooking food and things like that really and will... finessing cooking, you exactly. know, it's like so. Like, I can take these crummy ingredients and make something yes, that's really exactly. good, that's and you guys are going to be like, oh, that was yeah. so good. Instead that's of like, finesse I was talking about. oh, we have to choke down another meal, you know? And that's something to think about as you're doing your preps. Like, what what could you put away? What seasonings or what little this or that could you mm-hmm. put away that could really... Be um, a game changer. Makes, yeah, make yeah. it palatable down the road. Yeah. Um, they they make these little crafting dishes that like or or these little crafting containers and they all link together into a chain and those are great for seasonings in your go bag. Yeah, they don't take yep. up a lot of space and um, they you can put seasonings in your go bag. Great, and that's one of the reasons why I love Granny Pam's books. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, she was exactly really, who I was thinking about. Yeah, when you, <laughs> she's really over. done that thought experiment as far as um. You know, we want people to actually eat and it tastes good. And, and she's of... always challenged. It's funny because I've uh, eaten some of her dinners. She's always challenging herself to figure out what she can cook, you know, like different and what she's got to make it. Right. Like she makes amazing meals. Yeah. Right? Amazing. Meals. Yeah. Another big part of food preparation and harvesting, growing, all of that stuff is tools. Um, so mm-hmm. I know I've said this a lot before, but like a tinker you know, a blacksmith, somebody who knows how to work with metal and also like a woodworker, somebody who knows how to work with wood because those are kind of becoming lost skills, how to make furniture. Definitely. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, just simple, but I've never done it. Simple builds. Yeah. 
yeah. a hammer, a screwdriver, and a saw are kind of being lost skills right now. Mm-hmm. Exactly, because we've automated so many things. Um, or you just pay somebody else to do it. Right. Right. Or you just go and buy it. Right. It's done. Yep. All yep. I got to do is do the little instruction book, put A and a B and C and D, and we're done. Right. Yep. So those are things that I was kind of like, okay. Um, now, now age and body type wise, right? Um, older people can sit and help with sorting seeds and things like that. Um, canning where you're just, you know, peeling tomatoes and stuff like that all day, that kind of thing. Um, you know, where they might want not want to be out digging in the garden or swinging the hammer as a tinker. But, right. you know, there's definite things that they can do as well. Um, young people as well. I get Christian involved in all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, they can definitely help for it. Uh, forage. They can help garden. They can do a whole bunch that's of stuff how, there. That's how I learned a lot was just helping Dad do stuff, you yeah. know. Dad exactly. was always like fixing his own house stuff and well, car I mean, stuff. Cooking for me was that way. You know, yeah. I was always, I was like sitting on the counter watching Mom do her thing or whatever, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. And our children would probably be better off if we did that with them all the time. And use it as learning experiences, mm-hmm. too. Not just, like, let the kid watch, but engage them. Right. Okay, as far as water goes, so water is obviously super important. It's more important than food. You can only go three days without water. So locating viable water is going to be essential. Negotiating might be come into this. You know, you might have to negotiate with somebody who has the water and you need access to that water. Um, that's where you better be, you know, on your best best behavior and, and uh, being ready to trade some skills or some assets in return for that water. Um, uh, purifying the water. So if you mm-hmm. haven't been learning, you better know somebody who has, you know, it's going to take... And then there's a big difference between small scale water pur- purification to like a larger scale water purification yeah, for group. the community, yeah. right? So uh, some of those uh, YouTube videos where they're working with communities in Africa for water purification are really, really good. Another thing that I thought of that is in line with water is um, distillation. So a lot of uh, the advances in our societies came when they started drinking beer and wine and things like that because they weren't drinking contaminated water because of the distillation processes. Mm-hmm. So, um, and alcohol production is really, really important. Um, it's really good for um, all your medical needs. It's essential. So um, that's why I thought, well, you know, kind of goes in there with water, knowing how to distill not only provides you with alcohol, but you can also distill the water to get clean water that way that it's, you know, germ free. Pesticide free we're we're pretty spoiled. Our bodies can't <laughs> take it, right? But Yeah, I was so I was looking up a uh, average water like here's a here's an article USGA GS USGS average each person uses 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. Yeah. It, I mean, in a standard, like, modern home, right? That's what, you know, like, showering and eating and cleaning, dishwasher, washing machine, all that stuff. Right. 100 80 gallons. 80 to 100 day. gallons so of water a day. So, obviously, you wouldn't be doing, That's like, 400 that gallons much. for a family of but, four. But, yeah. 400 gallons for a family of so, four. Okay, and then you yeah, have so that's, community that's what you're living, of 30? Yeah, that's what you're living with today. Yeah. Think about what you're going to have to cut out and what you're going to have to do to conserve water in the future, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And then if you have 30 like you people now, in your group, well, you know, 30 times that 100. Thousands of gallons, yeah. Yeah. 3,000 gallons. Yes. That's why how, I say... How much does a pool hold? Uh, my, the doughboy that we have yeah. holds 15,000 gallons. Okay, so that'll... That'll last a couple days. Yeah, right. Five days. days. Five days for those 30 people. Yeah. Not even a week. Yeah. 
and, under, and it would normal, last under longer for my family of four, condition. you know, and then we would, yeah. we would obviously. Well, and that's the modern conditions too, because you're going to, yeah. you're going to have to figure out ways. To... But you still need to drink a good deal of it yep. um, every day. Yep. And then you still need to wash because you need to keep your hygiene up. Mm -hmm. yep. So, but um, yeah, we'd obviously be headed off to our BOL. So, mm -hmm. not staying here. That's just for mm -hmm. short term. Okay, so water. Okay, people that know about water are going to be important. You know, these <laughs> anybody who yep. knows about, like, piping and stuff like that, really important because now you can move the water to different locations if you're uh, setting up gardens. Water. Yeah. yeah. Um, wells, uh, ma you know, making wells, things like that. Um, when you just can't call on somebody, hey, I need to dig a well, you know. That's yeah, because if you could move water without actually carrying it in a bucket, you'll be so much better. Right? I mean, that's a lot the of energy, your time. Like the fuel yeah. it takes to move water. Exactly, it's heavy. You know, it's like eight pounds or something. Yeah, that's per some... gallon. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and that's going to take up a large part of your day is just moving water if you have to uh -huh. do it by hand. Every so, day. Um, that one system that was out at Prepper Camp was really cool. Yeah. Where they were uh, pulling it from the pond and then they can move it via gravity and stuff. Yeah, Christian without a, it's a little it. pump. It's yeah. a little pump, but it's it doesn't use energy. It uses gravity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christian was way into that. He was like telling me all yeah. about it. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's how it I have no idea. Are, um, it's a, I don't know, that's a okay, so shelter, obviously pretty important. Um, it's another essential and well, so you think the obvious yeah we need builders and we need construction people and things like that but I was also thinking about like the woodworkers for furniture for things like that I mean you don't want to be sleeping on the ground you want to get off the ground that kind of thing um, even in your shelter mm -hmm. so all of that's going to be important how they used to make beds like you know night night sleep tight was your strings and things Bed like bugs, that right, <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah um, security for the camp, obviously important as well. Um, but not only just to have guards, physical mm -hmm. people that can actually fight and shoot and do that kind of thing, but Turn. also like the computer people who mm -hmm. can set up a defensive web, who can strategize mm -hmm. out those kind of things. Mm -hmm. In the shelter is also information gather, your information network. Uh, to know what the threats are to your shelter, what's in that area, what are you, you know. Your area studies. Exactly, your area studies. That goes down with Samuel my Culper book with should be, yeah, shelter talking as well. about that. Yeah, community and, but mm -hmm. with shelter. I think it's an yep. important part um, as well. Clothing, you know, clothing, people that can make clothing, that can, what about shoes? You know, like well, you just can't go buy, to Walmart or whatever, go online, buy a new pair of shoes. What are you going to do? Um, obviously, you're going to repair the ones you have for a long time. But yep. eventually, you know, you might want to figure out how to We're make some shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind moccasins, but they're, they're not as good for your feet. That is for sure. Our modern shoes are way better. So um, that's really important. And I don't know, like boot shops you know things like that so people that cr are creative that can do that kind of thing it's gonna be good um hygiene so lots of women are like oh whatever i don't want to be you know cooking all the time gardening all the time doing all this stuff well there's a lot of women who um are really really knowledgeable when it comes to proper hygiene and things like that and they can help that the community that way there's going to have to be, you know, some kind of a toothpaste being made and soaps and um, things that smell good and make you feel good. And that's all really important to your psyche as well. Uh, so it's an important role, even though you might be like, oh, well, that's not as, you know, it's not as glorious as keeping food and water in your belly. No, but the, your mental attitude, your mental stasis is really, really important as well. Um, so you, and you got to be clean or else you, you get diseases. So... Um, that's where I was thinking a lot of that would be helpful. Also, people just taking care of the area. You know, you don't want to be living in slop and you don't want to be living in dirty clothes. Um, so I know it goes down with hygiene as well, but all of those roles have to be filled as well. So a 
place for everyone. Everyone matters. All right, so medical is pretty obvious. You know, anybody who's going to have medical training is going to be a godsend. Um, f- field medics to go out with scouting crews, things like that, as well as doctors there, pharmacists, right? People who know uh, natural herbal healing so that they can make product and provide it when you don't have access to all of the drugs that are fly- flowing out of China. Um, surgeons, you know, I don't know how effective. Mm-hmm. It's be hard without the scans and things like that. That's what I've heard from a lot of uh, different people as far as that goes. But they used to do rudimentary surgery back in the day when it comes down to it, you know. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Yeah, bite on this stick. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, there's where your alcohol comes in handy. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. For you or the surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who um, studies nerves. Dennis. I mean, teeth are so important. Um, and if you ever had like a really bad toothache, man, you know immediately how important that is because it just is the worst. So dentists are really important and having like a grip on basic dental knowledge, that kind of thing. Um, and then psychological help, health, help, help too. But um, so a lot of times artists or more spiritual people are really good at providing a grounding for um, very industrious people, right? Um, and be, I don't know. People like myself that are kind of over industrial sometimes, you can get burned out. So, having that check to that balance um, is really good. And I can't imagine anything more psychologically devastating than us having to go into a survival situation. So, wouldn't it be nice to know that you had somebody in your community that could actually help, like, stabilize the crew instead of letting everybody just, you know fall into oblivion kind of thing yeah it's important it is it's like kind of the morale thing right it's kind of where we're i i hate to say it that way but it's kind of where we're at in the united states right Right? now and Mm. um i wish that they uh i wish that even it was a little bit more grounded there as well where like it was brought a little bit back more to basics and like be thankful for so many things that you have and being thankful will get rid of a lot of that depression. Um, but it seems like they just want to make a big deal out of it and then prescribe drugs for it and let people kind of spin into oblivion, which is really, really sad. Then community structure. So obviously we have a lot of people that uh, do desk jobs and things like that. And that's great. I do a desk job myself, you know. Um, We need people who can organize what the heck is going on in the community. You know, we're bringing in X amount of food, Y amount of foods going out. We need to make sure that this is, uh, you know, on a sustainable level, that kind of thing. Same with waters, same with enough shelter for everybody. We need to make sure that, you know, uh, the crews are being properly managed and things like that to where people aren't getting overworked or um, untrained, you know that we we're taking care of everybody within that group in in a in the most efficient way. And so I think that that's a lot where the community structure comes into things and where we need those organizers, we need those um people that are just really good at putting together the structure of how uh everybody's going to interact cuz everybody will need each other and we'll need to do that in a productive not at each other's throats manner. Yeah. And that's going to be, you're going to have to keep that in mind because it's, it's going to be real easy to go snippy. Yep. Right. I've been watching a lot of the Vikings show and <laughs> it's like, man, every time things just start going good, then they turn on each other and everybody's yep. all mad. And I'm like, that's so true. It's how it, it kind of how it is. And that's sad. Um, yep. but, uh, yeah, it would definitely be something that people have to think about. And like you say, keep in mind so that when stuff starts going down, you got to remember, you got to be thankful for those people that are there in your group. And because uh, without them, 
You know, you can't do it alone. We've we've already covered that bridge. Mm-hmm. We just can't do it alone. Um, but I liked how I liked the article you sent over regarding the leadership. How you know leadership kind of needs to be out front yep. and be this confident forward person where like everybody's like, okay, we can do this. We're together um, and try to avoid things happening. Yes, exactly. But then the management has to be there to like be in touch with each one of those employees or those people in your group to make sure that nobody's faltering really hard in an area and that all those, the pieces that the leader is leading, all the pieces are together on the board behind them. So that's, I liked that kind of perspective. And the better you can plan, either plan ahead or plan on the move, you're going to be better off. Yes. Instead of just winging it. Yeah, and and you're going to have to, that's not to say that you can't adapt, like, rapidly. You're going to need, like Swenson says, A, B, C, D, E, (laughs) right? Yep. But, uh, yeah, have the plans, try and go for it. So I was the type of person where I'd put a plan in place and then if anything went wrong, I just, it just screwed up my whole everything. Yeah. Right? So I yep. had to learn how to be like, okay, that's all good. Yep. We got this way we can go and we're going to be okay. You know, pivot, <laughs> pivot, pivot. You're right. So that's what we're going to have to do. All right. Let's get into some changing earth news. Cause I got, I got lots of changing earth news for you guys. It's been a crazy week. So, all right, going into the change in Earth news. All right, change in the Earth music news. Music is so music. good. Do, do, do. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you still don't even know what it sounds like. Uh huh. Well, guys, it has been a wild ride on our planet this past week. That is for sure. Um, let's see, there is this, oh, I sent you the video in India, the massive uplift that happened. That's crazy. Yeah. It's just, it's a riverbed and all of a sudden the land is just boom, coming up all along this line. And, uh, all I could think about was the new Madrid earthquake <sighs> when the Mississippi ran backwards. That's yep. exactly what happened underneath the Mississippi riverbed is it did that uplift so instantly that that river hit it and washed backwards and had to chart a new route i was thinking about was it dune with uh-huh. the creatures with the, the worms, worms under, yeah. yeah yeah the spice worms <laughs> it's yes. like so big freaking worms gonna come pop it out of there yeah that's all i could think man it that that those people were just sitting emotion. there chatting and laughing and... it's got to be methane or volcanic and either yeah. way that's you probably don't want to be around that breathing it no. i'm just saying so. They were just hanging out, having a good time. We saw some, uh, so Arizona got hit last week, and then Utah got hit after that with some pretty massive flooding. Uh, there has been some massive flooding on our planet. Uh, the sun was mostly quiet. We had some small CME bursts, just tiny things moving in um, as we got to like Monday of last week. Um, We saw some cyclones over towards uh, China. But in Italy, this massive hailstorm hits. And it caused just massive flooding and mudslides. Really cool. Well, not cool. I mean, I hope everybody's (laughs) okay. But the the images coming out of Italy were just insane. Mexico also saw some major flooding in uh, Sonora. Uh, in Bangladesh, there's the largest re- refugee camp there in Bangladesh, and mm-hmm. it got just pummeled by flooding. So prayers out to all those people out there. They're already on, on the edge of survival. That's some real survival right there. And, um, yeah, they just got creamed, so that really wasn't the best. And then in Yemen, uh, southern Yemen also saw some just intense intense flooding back home we come into the 28th uh we there was a northern cme eruption it was Mm -hmm. small uh, some solar winds nothing that we need to like freak out about but the earth kept going crazy um 
Cinnabug, Cinnabug, Cinnabung volcano in Indonesia, it erupted. It erupts fairly often, so it's not like a super odd thing. Um, Indonesia sees a lot of volcanic activity. Um, but it blew it out 23,000 feet into the air, the ash. <laughs> yeah. Really impressive uh, footage coming out of there. And then Italy, Stromboli erupts. And it's not unusual for Stromboli to erupt as, erupt as well, but it Isn't was... Isn't that a pastry or something? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I think it is. They named it. But it's a volcanic mountain there. Okay. And uh, it was a very explosive eruption. So it's uh, kind of a more unusual type of activity for it. Hmm. In Turkey, I don't know if you've seen this. Have you seen Turkey? There's massive massive wildfires going off in no. Turkey. Um, it's still going. Um, it's in my further on down the week news, too, so we'll get back to Turkey. But, yeah, whole communities just being wiped out. Um, Pakistan also saw a ton of flooding. And then in the United States, 1.6 million acres in 12 states are on fire right now. So, uh, yay. That time of year. I mean, but think about this. How many wildfires all across the globe mm -hmm. and then the volcanoes on top of it? Mm -hmm. How much, you know, um, sulfur dioxide is just being spewed into our atmosphere? Yeah, into the air. Right? Mm -hmm. Venezuela also saw flooding. Then we come down. There was snowfall in Brazil. Like, not in the mountains. Yeah, the mountains of Brazil see snow, yay, right? No, no. We're talking on the floor, threatening coffee crops, sugar cane, and orange crops, the ones that actually oh, made it Oh, because coffee the... wasn't already having an exactly. issue. Exactly. Just come on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So now they saw snow on the ground. And then um, Lebanon is also having severe wildfires that are spreading north to Syria. So pretty much if you're not flooding, you're on fire right now or really hot. Like, that's how our world looks right about now. I don't know. I didn't hear anything about Russia. So I guess they're doing okay. Um, so coming in, there's no CMEs today. Uh, there was a very massive earthquake in Greece. There was a 5.0 in Iceland, so we're watching the volcanoes there to see if that's going to spark uh, some more volcanic activity there as well. And there was a 5.5 on the Mexico-U.S. border. What about Alaska? Remember Alaska had Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I skipped four? Alaska. You're right. Yeah. There was an 8.0 in Alaska with tsunami warnings issued. Yeah. Uh, there was a 6.2 and a 5.6 that followed it, but that wasn't the worst of it. The work, because Alaska, like at least that happened off of the coastline Coast, yeah. and it was deep. So, yes, they felt it, but like the damage wasn't as bad. There was a 6.1 that hit Peru on the Peru Ecuador border, border mm -hmm. on the 30th, and it was only 20 miles in depth. It did some major, major damage over there. Mm -hmm. um, it was worse. Um, tonight, there's a four-way conjunction between Saturn, Mercury, the Earth, and the Sun. So we're all on earthquake watch. Whenever that conjunction lines up, there's a probability for some good earthquakes to happen. So coming into yesterday, um, India, one of their national highways collapsed because of heavy rain and landslides. So you know they have those crazy roads over there anyway that are like on the mountain edge. Like, they're, like, slipping off, and it's, like, one of their national highways. Mm. In Canada, 250 wildfires are burning across uh, British Columbia. Over uh, 4,500 kilometers, uh, square kilometers of um, acreage burned up there. Um, Turkey, so in Turkey, they've lost four lives, and the fires are still burning. Okay, so I went... Because um, I've been curious, right, about, like, because um, that's one of the big uh, things is everyone's like, oh, all these volcanoes erupt and all these volcanoes yeah. erupted. So I wanted to start tracking it myself just to yes. see, right, like, is this unusual? Is it more than normal, less than normal? What's going on? 
So two weeks ago, when I looked at it, there was 26 active volcanoes and 19 were showing signs of major activity. When I checked it today, there was only 24 active volcanoes, uh, 15 showing signs of major activity and 46 eruption warnings. So I didn't record eruption warnings last time, so I'll do that in the future now. But mm -hmm. all in all, that's a downtick of volcanic activity right now. So that's good news. Like I say, it seems like everything's burning or flooding right now. So um, It's all in your imagination. And there, <laughs> um, it could be, you know, normal activity, but there's things that are standing out way ahead. Like when we had the big storm here and I had just moved here and I was like, okay, is this a normal storm or is this like an out of usual storm? Oh, the winter storm? The, no, the no. first year I moved here, there was like a huge storm, just a thunderstorm, big oh, winds, yeah. that kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? And I didn't know if that was like typical for this area or not. Well, yeah. one of the big old growth trees in our neighborhood got knocked down from it. So if that tree stood all that time, mm -hmm. it was obviously a pretty big storm to be able to knock down an old growth tree like that, right? And uh, with a lot of the flooding that I was seeing, you're watching these huge trees, you know, get taken away in the flooding. So when you see signs like that, um, you can know it's not a regular occurrence because it's not just like it's it, those are big growth things that take time to grow. So if it happened every year, it would never have made it that far. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of judge that kind of. You know, are they just showing you, oh, look at this, look at this, fear monger, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. compared to, okay, that's a serious, unusual event, and the snow in Brazil is definitely an unusual event. Um, what's going on in Italy right now, definitely not normal, and Turkey is definitely not normal. Um, the Canada, to see as much of Canada burning is not normal. Like, we know California does, um, but to see them... And Washington and Oregon have been going off a lot. But to see it all the way up into Canada, uh, losing that much, yes and no. They have some big wildfires every once in a while. Um, but, yeah, so we just got to keep our eye on it and judge. Because, obviously, the news isn't going to do it for us. You know? All righty. Well, that's all I got. That was my I get no comment on your last statement. Uh, what that obviously the news doesn't do it yeah, for us? Yeah. I don't like I no I, comments. I don't watch it anymore anyway. They no, might. me either. I'm kind of like I'm done. I can't. I want like good watch news argue. sources, and it just seems like it's hard to find nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to sit there and watch the talking heads argue over things that, you know. Mm hmm. Don't get us banned. I'm don't not. Us, I'm oh, not. We're being, not we're being good. Don't we're being good. It. Yeah. So, oh, if you do turn into your tune into your news, just remember to take everything with a grain of salt and do your research. Just like, yep. you know, you should be doing with me. I encourage you to Maybe go check it out. Maybe some lime and tequila, too. And but, give you me, know. yeah, give me the feedback. Let me know. So. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, remember, dream survive thrive thank you for joining sarah and chen for this episode of the changing earth podcast don't forget to pick up your copy of day after disaster at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com if you love the changing earth series